Hey guys, welcome back. In this week's video, we're gonna break down the regularly scheduled maintenance on our four-wheel camper and what we do to get ready for the spring season of camping. After a long winter of camping, our camper is getting kind of dingy and yuck. Here's a list of all the supplies that we're gonna be using during the filming of this video. Also, you can find the products that we talk about today in the links down below. For those of you out there that are new to four wheel camping, you're gonna have a great idea on the type of maintenance that you're gonna to have to do regularly to keep your camper in top functioning form. And if we haven't met already, I'm Austin Head. So let's get this cleaning party started. Let's go. All right, guys, so the first thing that we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to chlorinate the water system to clean it of any bacteria or stuff that we really don't want there. We're gonna start with the old Ask Google. And Google said we should use about a quarter cup of bleach to 16 gallons of water. And since we have 26 gallons of water on this camper, just under half a cup for our 26 gallon tank. The real tip here is that we need to have our hot water heater off because if we start to cook chlorine, it creates a gas, which is lethal to us. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the chlorine in the water system, fill everything up and then run it to get the chlorine in all of the piping. And then we're just gonna let that sit for about 12 hours before we start flushing the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up until it starts to bubble out of this vent hole here. So let's go ahead and open up the faucet and the other drains that we have. All right, now we let that marinate for about 12 hours and then we'll start flushing the system out. So since we got that going on, we're gonna go to the next step. And that's where I'm gonna wash the exterior of the camper and check for any defects. As per the four wheel camper website, they really recommend dish soap to clean the exterior of the camper. All right, so I didn't personally notice any defects in the camper exterior itself. Let me know in the comments below if you did. I thought it would be an ideal time to check the seals on the doors. Not only that, but we also need to check the strike plate to make sure the door is closing completely so we don't get any dust intrusion that we don't actually want. And as you guys can see, this is what I'm talking about right here. These two strike plates have screws holding them in place. So if we need to adjust them, we need a number two square tip bit to adjust these strike plates depending on if the door seal is good enough. And we can really tell if the seal is good enough if we don't really have any water intrusion inside of the threshold of the door after washing it. And it appears that I don't have any water intrusion in here, so our strike plates are good to go. Right now we're gonna take off the thermal layer on the camper and then we're gonna wipe down all the vinyl with a little bit of mold mix. And then on top of that, we're gonna put a protectant on the vinyl to help maintain its flexibility and durability throughout the summer season of camping. Who would have thought that a four wheel camper being a studio is a cramped place to be? It looks like we might've found mold up in the corner. So we're definitely washing this thermal layer today. All right, since we have the thermal layer out, we might as well take the bed out too. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get this stuff out of here and into the washing machine. And now it's time to clean the vinyl off. I'm gonna use this 
honest disinfecting spray as you can see this is a kid safe formula it may not be right for you but it's definitely right for our situation <coughs> oh god i can feel myself dying one cell at a time all right we need a we need to move the camera. Whew. I'm not that stretchy. I gotta be careful about that one. Looks like we might have a large mold deposit right up here. So it looks like we got the vinyl cleaned off and all the mold is executed. All right, so let's go ahead and put the vinyl protectant on. And this is somewhere where we really need to be careful. Check this out. So under this vinyl layer right here, we have a clear vinyl layer. And this clear vinyl layer, we need to protect like it's the only one we got. Because if we get any vinyl protectant on that clear layer, it's gonna fog it up and destroy it. I know you and I, we don't wanna spend that kind of money to replace something like that. All right, good work guys. Next thing on the list, we're gonna clean the vents, but we're gonna use the sink and the camper because we already got bleach water in it and we're gonna wipe these vents clean. <laughs> this this, I think. All right, got my fingers under lip. There it is, one. The last thing we're going to do with the vent is make sure all the screws are tight because these have a tendency to get loose on rough roads and uh, we don't want to lose this knob like we had before. And for this I'm going to use my handy dandy Skeletool which you can find a link for in the description below. Alright and be sure not to over tighten because that is a very real possibility and also when you're closing these things we don't want to close them too hard. I'm literally applying a quarter pound of pressure to make sure that thing is snug in place because if you tighten it too tight again you can strip the piece of plastic that's inside of here so far we've got the vents taken care of we've got the interior vinyl taken care of we got all the bedding out and we're washing the thermal layer let's get to the nuts and bolts of the project so we can wrap this thing up before it gets too late all right so let's look and see what we got left clean and lube the toilet so we're gonna check our CO2 monitor. We're gonna check our smoke detector. We're gonna check our fire extinguisher and check our batteries for any corrosion. Plus we need to look inside of our fuse bank and our water area, our refrigerator. So stick with me because I think we have a few more tips and tricks that are gonna help you with your yearly maintenance and your spring cleaning. Just so you know, I recently cleaned out the toilet. So there's nothing disgusting in there except for actual water. So when you go in the toilet with me right now, you're not gonna see any floaters. Let's start cleaning and lubing the toilet, shall we? Ta-da! So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of this lubrication. is a nine volt battery. So we're gonna go ahead and swap that nine volt battery out. Press the safety switch, insert the nine volt the correct way. And we're gonna go ahead and test the battery. Perfect, works great. So in the four wheel camper manual, it actually says to take this thing and vacuum it out to make sure that it doesn't have any contaminants in this area. And then we can also test and reset the sensor here. So it's ready for propane and carbon monoxide. Perfect. It looks like it's working perfectly. So there's nothing else that we really need to do since it's already been cleaned.
Hey guys, so quick tip. The first thing that you're gonna notice on your four wheel camper, if your fridge isn't staying cold enough, is gonna be this tray right here. And then the ice inside of the freezer that builds up from the condensation had all melted and filled the tray completely up with water. And if I would have caught it beforehand, I wouldn't have lost two refrigerator loads full of food to a careless mistake. Snapple out. Just about done right here, baby. Let's get back inside so we can put that thermal layer back up, get the bed together, and then put the dry deck in. Whoop, whoop. Ow, ow. Whoop back our dollars, whoop, whoop. Bedding system. Shaka bra. A good goosh. Well, shoot, it looks like we need to move this thermal air down like two inches. So, well, what the F? That stinks. So let's just move it two inches because I ain't about imperfection. I just want to say thank you for watching. So if there's anything that you found valuable so far, please go ahead and use our links down below because it really does help us bring you better content in the future. So this is the dry deck stuff that I forgot to show the install of. I put it in the storage compartments under the back seats just in case any moisture got in there. It wouldn't actually be touching the food or the other stored items. I think I stepped on a GoPro battery. Now my foot's killing me. I really appreciate you joining me for the spring cleaning maintenance episode that we're bringing you today. I'm Austin with Wolfpack Outdoors. Live unbound, always explore, family forever. I'll howl at you later.